What's going on guys? Over the past few weeks, I've shot with three different disposable cameras for my first time since I was a kid. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about my philosophy on disposables, breaking down why they're important, why they're atrocious, and how best to use them, all the while showing you all my photos that I shot with them, because I never wanna be one of those YouTube photographers that doesn't actually shoot photos. Quick preface, what makes a photo special to me as a photographer is 50% final product and 50% process. How did it feel shooting the photo? Did I put a lot of work into it mentally or physically? How did my subjects feel when they had that photo taken of them? These are the feelings that create sentiment. And when you find that perfect sentiment, the process that feels most authentic and fulfilling to you, the quality of your work tends to show it. Now I've found that disposable cameras tend to force that authenticity out of us. And today I'm gonna to talk about why. First of all, you're shooting on film, and this includes all the joys and wonders of shooting film. You've got 27 or so photos on each of these cameras, and between developing fees and the camera itself, you're paying about a dollar an image, making each image you take be very careful and deliberate and exciting. Every time you press that shutter button, there is a sense of excitement that doesn't exist with digital photography when you can just do the spray and pray method, shooting 100 photos in any given session. All these things culminate into me feeling like the decisive moment still exists with disposables, which is why I want to create an iPhone app where you have to do an in-app upgrade of $1 for every single photo you take and you don't actually get to see the images until you've shot 27 and waited four days of developing time. All troll business ideas aside, I think there's a sense of excitement that comes from shooting film and this can translate into your subjects, making them look a lot more relaxed and comfortable with you. So if you're anything like me, you've probably pissed off your friends and family taking too long shooting too many photos of them on a digital camera or smartphone. Meanwhile, when you're shooting film with them, people tend to be a lot more flattered and willing because it feels like you're spending a photo on them. It feels a lot more special, like you're commemorating a shot rather than taking these obligatory and or incessant photos of them for the sake of documentation. And this tends to translate into better looking images. Moving on to ergonomics, I'm thrilled by disposables because they introduce a spontaneity factor to my work that I wouldn't have with any other camera. And that's because they remove all my trepidations for carrying a camera at all times. They are lightweight, they're small, and they're durable. So I don't hesitate to throw it in my backpack or my front pocket. And I also don't mind bringing them to risky situations. For a big night out where I might go dancing, maybe even end up in a mosh pit, I wouldn't want to have a DSLR on me or an expensive camera, but when you have these disposables that you're not afraid to break, you could just bring them anywhere and everywhere, and you end up photographing moments that you wouldn't normally have your camera on you for, and, and that's a big deal. That really changes how your process works, and you just photograph a lot more stuff. Moving on to street photography. Street photos has been one of my favorite subjects to shoot these days living in New York, and the disposables were a lot of fun for this, and here's why. So first of all, they have broken down the barriers between shooting mode and life mode, because I typically shoot street on my DSLR with a couple different lenses in my backpack. It becomes a production, and I'm shooting here, and then when I'm not shooting, I just have nothing on me. But a lot of successful street photographers say you should always have a camera on you because just you don't want to miss a moment. And I've definitely been in instances where there's an incredible thing that happens in front of me, and I just wish that I had my camera, and this smartphone doesn't quite cut it. The disposable camera has been an awesome solution for this because I can carry it and pretty much forget that I have it on me until I need it, which is phenomenal. And number two, they're a lot less intimidating and noticeable than other cameras. Now, when you're shooting photos of strangers, they are gonna notice your camera and they're gonna have different reactions based on the type of camera that you're using. So when you have this big honking DSLR you shove in someone's face, that's a jarring experience and they're more likely to think you're some creepy, intense, professional photographer guy more so than just a low-key, confused tourist. And that is a huge asset in street photography because yeah, it's easy to shoot that intense photo, but dealing with the repercussions of a shot are a whole other story. And when you have such a low-key camera like this, people might not even notice you taking their image, which is an asset to a lot of people. Moving on, let's talk about limitations of shooting with disposables. I think that disposables are some of the most fun cameras to shoot on because the images have a cool, nostalgic look, which we'll dig into in a second, and the process of shooting with them is incredibly simple. The only technical decision you have to make is whether you want to shoot with flash or no flash which makes you able to funnel all of your attention into composition and working with your subjects and just getting the best possible photo. 
instead of being bogged down by all these technical limitations, like thinking about your zoom factor, your focusing, your shutter speed aperture, ISO, all of these things which can detract your attention away from just shooting a beautifully composed image. I also have my limitations, like I spilled water on my shirt, and you can watch it dry throughout this video because I don't feel like changing it. Having limitations in your camera are an awesome way to have to experiment and work around them, making you become a better photographer. So a lot of people love fixed focal length lenses, not just because they're lighter, but also because they force you to move around and explore to find that perfect composition rather than just zooming in or zooming out, and oftentimes you'll find better images as a result. Disposables take this to the next level by removing all of the manual settings in your camera, they're making you just incredibly present in the shooting process, minimizing all of your distractions, allowing you just to really hone in on composition, which I think is a lot of fun and incredibly refreshing in comparison to shooting with other cameras. Of course, this is a technical trade-off. What you gain in focus, you lose in control. And if you need perfectly exposed, consistent images every time, what a horrible camera for you. But if you've come to love the variability of it, not knowing exactly what you're gonna get, then these cameras are incredibly fun. They're not meant for professional shooting, but they give you really cool results, and you have to be okay with some wacky, wacky results at times. Moving on to the look. The look of these disposables is, for some people, the most compelling reason to shoot on them, for others, an incredible deterrence, and I fall somewhere in between. So, starting off on the bright side, these images tend to have a very soft, warm, nostalgic feel to them, especially the color ones that a lot of people are obsessed over, myself included, and it's something that digital photographers have been trying to emulate in Lightroom for ages since it came out. Um, and on a side note, I am dropping five different preset packs that are incredibly educational in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for those. I'm very excited about them. There's going to be one on color film photos. Back to the joy of limitations. I've always set this rule for myself of when I shoot on a camera that takes photos in color, then I'm going to keep the images in color. And the reason being, it's so easy to just use black and white as a crutch because everything looks artistic in black and white. So I've reserved black and white images for black and white shooting most of the time. And I know this isn't a popular opinion. This is just more just my own take. But it's been a treat shooting with these black and white disposable cameras because because I haven't had black and white street photos in a very, very long time, and these are very cool to see. On a side note, I said that these images are super soft, yet you're probably noticing why my black and white images are incredibly contrasty and sharp. This is all post-production. If you want to see what they originally looked like when they came back from the lab, Here's, here's an image, it's very soft as you'll see. I just love a lot of punch in my black and white street work. What a lot of people don't like, and some people actually love, is the image quality. So you've got a lot of noisy images, you've got absolutely atrocious dynamic range on all of these cameras. The highlights are oftentimes going to be blown and the shadows are going to be crushed. And of course the resolution is super low, so you can't print these images very large. You're going to keep them on the smaller side. But if you keep them small, they don't look bad. Of course all these attributes contribute to a feel for the images that a lot of people adore. But from a technical standpoint, definitely not the best. But it's important to point out that these critiques are applying our modern day pixel pushing philosophy to essentially toy cameras that have been out for decades. Now, we love to heckle camera companies for their new cameras because they have 30 megapixels instead of 50 or a slightly slower image processor or 10 frames per second shooting instead of 14. And when all these cameras are quite comparable, it is important to dwell on these little details. But this is not the point of these little disposable cameras. They are not trying to be innovative in that sense. They're really just doing their job and they're doing it well. It's not a big job but they do it with a certain grace. But in the grand scheme of photography, none of this matters. What matters is having a camera that captures your memories and doesn't miss moments, and that's about it. Every camera has its trade-offs, and these are certainly not fit for a professional photographer who's printing large works for clients, but for casual photographers who want to live in the moment without being glued to their camera screens, who are willing to compromise passable image quality for a stellar shooting experience, then disposables are an excellent choice. To wrap this up, I have had a ton of fun shooting disposables. Now, of course, I'm not ready to ditch my DSLR for disposables, but when they serve a purpose, they serve it well. So 
For instance, if I'm going backpacking or on a non-photo focused vacation, I'm gonna shoot disposables. If I'm going out to a party or going dancing or going to a mosh pit on a dance floor or forcing a mosh pit on a dance floor that shouldn't have a mosh pit, a favorite hobby of mine, then I'm gonna bring a disposable. Or if I just want a break from typical photography, wanna do something a little bit different, it's gonna be disposables. Links to all the cameras I used in the description down below and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video and what I should do next, if I should do a more technical piece weighing the merits of all these individual disposables. But I should make the similar style video to another type of camera like 35 millimeter or 360 camera, etc. Or if I should just keep making those street photography POV videos, a lot of you guys seem to be loving. Just let me know. Your feedback is incredibly important to me. I make weekly videos and I want to keep you guys happy. So definitely let me know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for weekly videos and follow me on Instagram for more photos. That is all I have to say. I'll see you eventually.